All right, today we're going to cover 7.3. This is over static error constants and system types. This will be our final lecture of the semester. Uh, basically what we're going to do here is, let's draw again. We are going to define steady state error. My writing is bad. Uh, an error in here. Performance. I can't write well and I can't spell today. So yeah, performance specifications. Okay. So before we've talked about things like settling time, percent overshoot, those are also types of performance specifications. The ones we're going to talk about today just deal with steady state error. And our specifications are going to be called static error constants. And we're not really going to cover new material uh, equation-wise. We're going to use the same equations that we had last time, the ones where the steady state error. We're just going to basically give new names to uh, some portions of those equations. Okay. So let's go over the static error constants. Alright, so we're going to start with step input. Remember we had three different test inputs. We had a step, a ramp, and then a parabolic. So we'll talk about each one today. So for a step input, let's just say we have we have u of t. Okay. And our equation for steady state error for that kind of step input was 1 over 1 plus the limit as s goes to 0 of g of s. All right, so this is the equation we derived last time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this limit right here. And we're going to give that a name. So basically we're going to say that k sub p is going to be the position constant. And that position constant is going to be equal to this limit. And it's going to be called position constant, because if you remember when we talked about uh, when you would want to use each of the test inputs, the step input was used if you wanted to test your system's ability to uh, maintain track of a constant position, target, for example. Okay, so that's why it's called position constant. So KP is just this limit. So now let's look at the ramp input. And then we'll do the parabolic. Okay, so here's ramp input. So this one we're going to have t times u of t. And then our equation that we derived in class last week is going to be 1 over the limit as s goes to 0 of s times g of s. Again, we're going to focus on this limit in the denominator. And we're going to call that k sub v where the V stands for velocity. So K sub V is going to be the velocity constant. And K sub V is just going to equal this limit. Okay. And again, this is called velocity constant because you're going to use a ramp input if you want to track the, if you want to check your system's ability to track something with a constant velocity. Okay, so now we've got that. And then finally, let's do parabolic. So we have the parabolic input. The one we talked about in class was 1 half t squared times u of t. And our equation for that is going to be 1 over the limit as s goes to 0 again, times s squared or s squared times g of s. Okay, so again, we're going to look at this limit, and we're going to give it a name. This time it'll be k sub a, where a stands for acceleration. So now we're going to have this acceleration constant, and that is just equal to the limit. So s goes to 0 of s squared times g of s. And again, the parabolic input would be used to uh, 
look at the system's ability to track something with constant acceleration. All right, so now what we're going to do, we are going to define a system type. Okay? And the system type is going to basically be determined by looking at the exponent on the variable s. Okay? So let's write this out. So we're going to define three system types. draw this picture first. So we're going to have our input. Let's call E of S. That's going to be our error. And then in here we've got our open loop closed, our open loop transfer function. So we've got K times S plus Z1 times S plus Z2, so on and so forth. And then on the denominator we're going to have S to the nth power times S plus P1 times S plus P2 so on and so forth. And then we've got our output. Alright, so that's going to be a unity feedback. So what we're going to do, we're going to focus on this N right here. Okay. So the system type basically equals the value of N in the denominator. So if n is equal to 0, then you would have s to the 0, which makes it go to 1. We're going to say that we have a type 0 system. If n equals 1, we're going to have a type 1. And if n equals 2, we'll have type 2. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. It just gives you a way to uh, reference this exponent on s. Because remember, like we talked about in class last week, this exponent of s basically determines what kind of response you're going to get. Okay, if you're going to get zero, finite, or an infinite error. Right. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to make up a table. And it'll list uh, the different error constants with the different types and things like that. So let's make a column for input. And underneath that column, let's put our three test inputs. So we've got our step, which is U of T. We've got ramp, which is T times U of T. And then we've got parabolic, which is one half T squared times U of T. And this table is found in your NISE textbook, by the way. I don't remember what table number it is, but it's in your book. And now our next column, let's do steady state error, the formula for that. Next one, let's have one, a column for type 0. And then underneath this type 0, let's have two columns. So we're going to have static error constant. And then we'll have error. And after we finish that, I'll scroll down and I'll do type 1 and type 2. All right, so for our steady state error formula for a step input, if we write it in terms of those error constants, we're going to have 1 over 1 plus k sub p. Okay. And if we have a type 0 system, our k sub p is going to be some constant. And the error will be 1 over 1 plus k sub p. And then for the ramp input, our general steady state error equation is going to be 1 over k sub v. If we have a type 0, k sub v is going to be equal to 0. You would find that out by doing the limit, taking s to 0. Um, so k sub v will be 0. Our error here will be infinity. Okay, so we'll have infinite error if we use a ramp input on a type 0 system. And then finally, parabolic. So 
our general equation for steady state error for a parabolic input is going to be 1 over k sub a. And in this case, k sub a is equal to 0. And we're going to have infinite error. Okay. Now let's do a similar thing for type 1 and type 2 systems. So here will be type 1. Again, we're going to have the static error constant column. And then we'll have one for the actual error. All right, so for the first row, we've got the step input. And our position constant is going to equal infinity. So remember, you get that from doing the limit. And then that leads to an error of zero. Okay, so you're going to have zero steady state error if you have a step input with a type 1 system. Going to the next one, we have the ramp input. So with that one, we have the velocity constant. KV will be constant in this case okay, when we have a type 1 system. So that means we have s to the first power in the denominator, g of s. And our error here is going to be 1 over kV. And then finally, for parabolic input, the acceleration constant is going to be 0. And the error will be infinity. All right, so we're going to have infinite error if we use a parabolic input for the type 1 system. So now, let's look at type 2. So with type 2, that means we've got s squared in the denominator. So we have static error constant here, and then we have error. And by error, that's steady state error. All right, so with a step input, our constant is k sub p, and that's going to equal infinity, and the error there is going to be 0. k sub v is what we'll have with the ramp input. k sub v will be equal to infinity, and error is going to be 0. And then finally, with the parabolic, input k sub a will be a constant, and our error will be 1 over k sub a. Okay. So this just basically gives you a table that shows you what error you get with each of the inputs, depending on the exponent of s in the denominator. Okay. So this table here would be good to put on your equation sheet. Um, I'm going to stop this video now so it doesn't get too long. In the next video, I will do the example for this material. All right. See you next time.